Google just dropped over 30 AI tools. Most people are confused. They're wasting time on the wrong ones. Today, I'm showing you which tools actually matter and which ones you can ignore completely. This is going to save you hundreds of hours. Let me organize this for you. Google's AI tools fall into seven categories. Core AI, Swiss Army Knife tools, developer tools, Google Labs experiments, creative and media tools, small AI models, and Gemini in Google Workspace. We're going through all of them. Let's start with the core. At the center of everything is Gemini. This is Google's main AI model. Think of it like ChatGPT, but built by Google. And here's what most people don't know. Gemini is better than ChatGPT and Claude at deep research, way better. If you need to analyze documents, compare data, or do serious research work, Gemini wins. The version called Gemini Advanced has a 1 million token context window. That's massive. You can upload entire books and it will remember everything. It works on web and mobile and it also powers AI overviews in Google search. So when you search something and see that AI summary at the top, that's Gemini doing the work. Hey, if we haven't met already, I'm the digital avatar of Julian Goldie, CEO of SEO agency, Goldie Agency. Whilst he's helping clients get more leads and customers, I'm here to help you get the latest AI updates. Julian Goldie reads every comment, so make sure you comment below. Now let's talk about the Swiss Army Knife tools. These are the tools that do multiple things. First up is Notebook LM. This thing creates podcasts, videos, infographics, and other content. But here's why it's special. Everything it creates is grounded in your uploaded sources. That means way fewer mistakes and hallucinations. You upload your documents and it only uses that information. It's not making stuff up from the internet. You can turn a boring PDF into a podcast conversation between two AI hosts. You can create study guides, briefing docs, timelines, and because it's grounded in your sources, the information is accurate. This is one of the most underrated tools Google has ever made. Then you have Gemini Gems. These are AI assistants built on top of Gemini. You can create custom agents for specific tasks, need help writing proposals, build a gem for that, need something for planning content, build a gem for that. It's like having specialized AI workers that understand exactly what you need. You set them up once, and they remember your preferences. They work faster than starting from scratch every time. And because they're built on Gemini, they're powerful. Think of them as your personal AI team. Next is Opal. This is Google's automation tool. Think Zapier or Make But Simpler. You build workflows with modular blocks, drag and drop, connect apps, automate boring tasks. Let's say you want every email attachment to automatically save to Google Drive and then get summarized by Gemini. Opal can do that. You don't need to code. You just connect the blocks. It's visual, it's simple, and it saves you hours every single week. A lot of these tools started in Google Labs. That's labs.google. Go check it out. That's where Google tests new stuff before it goes public. If you want to master tools like Gemini, Notebook LM, and Opal to scale your business, automate your workflows, and save hundreds of hours, you need to join the AI Profit Boardroom. This is where we show you exactly how to use Google's AI tools to get more customers and grow faster. We've got full breakdowns, automation templates, and a community of people who are crushing it. Link is in the description. Next category is developer tools. Google AI Studio is where this gets interesting. It started as a testing tool for developers, but now regular people use it too. You don't need to be a coder. It's great for prototyping and experimenting with AI. You can test prompts, build agents, see what works. It's not for building full scale software, but it's perfect for trying ideas fast. You get access to all of Google's AI models in one place. You can compare responses, you can tweak settings, and you can do it all for free. If you want to understand how AI actually works, this is your playground. Then there's Firebase Studio. This one's for building complex applications. If you're creating an actual product or software, this is what you use. It handles databases, authentication, hosting, all the backend stuff. It's powerful, but it's for serious developers. Most people won't need this unless you're building something big. Anti-gravity is Google's answer to cursor. It's a coding assistant that helps you write code faster. You describe what you want and it writes the code for you. It catches errors. It suggests improvements. If you're learning to code or you're already a developer, this speeds everything up. Jules is different. It handles coding tasks in the background while you do other stuff. You give it a task and it works on it while you focus on something else. It's like having a coding assistant that doesn't interrupt you. You come back later and the work is done. That's the future right there. Stitch is for website design. You describe the UI you want and it builds it for you. Colors, layout buttons, everything. It's not perfect, but it gets you 80% of the way there in minutes instead of hours. Then you tweak the details yourself.
Gemini Code Assistant and Gemini CLI plug Gemini into coding environments like VS Code. You're coding and you can ask Gemini questions right there. You can get code suggestions. You can debug faster. It's all integrated. Now, I'll be honest, if you're serious about coding, I still recommend Cursor plus Claude, but Google's tools are catching up fast. Now let's hit Google Labs experiments. This is where things get weird and fun. You've got Pameli, which analyzes websites and creates what they call business DNA plus social posts. You give it a URL and it figures out your brand voice, your audience, your style. Then it creates social media content that matches. It's experimental, but it's smart. Mixed board is for mood boards. If you're designing something or planning a creative project, you throw in images, colors, ideas, and it helps you organize everything visually. It's simple, but useful for creative work. Disco and Gen Tabs are wild. They turn your open browser tabs into an interactive app. Let's say you have 20 tabs open for research. Disco organizes them, summarizes them, and lets you interact with all that information in one place. It's like turning chaos into a dashboard. These are experimental. Some will stick around, some will disappear, but they're worth playing with because this is where Google tests the future. Creative and media tools. This is a big one. First is Nano Banana. This does image generation and editing with character consistency. That means you can create a character and keep using it across multiple images without it changing. Let's say you're building a brand and you need a mascot. You create it once in Nano and then use it in 50 different images, same face, same style every time. Huge for branding and content. You're not starting from scratch. With every image, you're building a visual identity. Then there's Veo3. This is high quality AI video with audio and dialogue. The quality is insane. You can generate short videos that look professional. You type a prompt in and Veo creates a video clip with motion, lighting, and even sound. We're talking movie quality stuff. You can use this for ads, social media, presentations, whatever, and it's only going to get better. Flow is Google's native creative tool. It's inside the Google ecosystem, so it connects with everything else. You can create designs, edit images, and it all syncs with your Google Drive and other tools. Imagine 4 is an image generator, but it's less popular now. Right? It was one of Google's earlier attempts at AI images. It works, but Nano is better. Most people have moved on from Imagine 4. Whisk and Whisk Animate let you do rapid creative exploration. You throw in ideas, images, sketches, and it creates variations fast. You're not spending hours on one concept. You're testing 10 concepts in 10 minutes. Then you pick the best one and refine it. This is how creative teams work now. Music AI Sandbox is an early stage music generation tool. You can create background music, loops, and sound effects. It's not ready for a professional music production yet, but it's getting there. If you need royalty free music for videos, this is a good option. Last category is Gemini in Google Workspace. This is Gemini integrated into all the Google apps you already use. Gmail, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Maps, Photos, YouTube, and Lens. It's also replacing Google Assistant on Android as the system level AI. So if you use Google products, Gemini is already inside them. In Gmail, you can draft emails, summarize threads, and reply faster. In Docs, you can write entire documents from prompts. In Sheets, you can analyze data and create formulas without knowing how. In Slides, you can generate presentations. In Maps, you get smarter directions. In Photos, you can search for anything and find it instantly. In YouTube, you get better recommendations and summaries. In Lens, you point your camera at something and get instant information. It's all built in. You don't need to download anything extra. So here's what you need to remember. You don't need to learn all 30 plus tools. Focus on these. Explore labs.google because that's where future breakthroughs happen. Learn Google AI Studio because it's powerful for experimentation. If you're creative, try Thought AI or FreePick with Nano and Veo3 and prioritize Gemini Deep Research and Notebook LM as your top skills. Those two alone will change how you work. If you want to master tools like Gemini, Notebook LM and Opal to scale your business or automate your workflows and save hundreds of hours, you need to join the AI Profit Boardroom. This is where we show you exactly how to use Google's AI tools to get more customers and grow faster. We've got full breakdowns, automation templates, and a community of people who are crushing it. Link is in the description. And if you want the full process, SOPs, and 100 plus AI use cases like this one, join the AI Success Lab. Links in the comments and description. You'll get all the video notes from there, plus access to our community of 38,000 members who are crushing it with AI. Link in the comments and description. You'll get all the video notes from there, plus access to our community. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.